Work on a newspaper is exciting. People working as a team. Reporters, feature writers, copy editors, and photographers. All striving to meet a deadline. At the copy desk, the editor selects the news and photos for an issue and plans the estimated space on a miniature newspaper page, sometimes called a dummy. The completed copy is sent to the composing room, where it is rewritten onto perforated tape. Notice that each line of type in a newspaper is exactly one column wide. These machines space or hyphenate each line so that left and right margins are even. Perforated tape is threaded onto an automatic typecasting machine. Instructions are relayed to the keyboard, and individual lines of type are cast from molten lead alloys. Since it is cast from liquid metal, it is called hot type. When it is cooled enough to solidify, the line of type, called a slug, is ejected into a tray and sent to the galley bank. A topographer clamps the type so that it will not spill. Then it goes to the proof press. Proofreader compares it with original copy and indicates typographical errors. Corrections are made. Some copy is made from prototype called cold type. It is also produced from perforated tape. When printed letters are seen through a lens, they appear magnified or distorted. A combination of lenses within this unusual camera employs this principle to create a variety of sizes and styles of type. Prototype, illustrations, and similar copy are combined to create a paste-up of the ad. Display ads and news photos are engraved. They are photographed with a special camera. The copy is photographed through a fine screen of 65 lines to the inch. The screen produces a pattern of dots, as shown in this magnified illustration. The negative film has been automatically developed, fixed, washed, and dried. Meanwhile, another photo engraver prepares a sheet of zinc. Although the metal looks mirror smooth, it is scrubbed to remove any smudge.
centrifugal force swirls off the excess ribs. A photographic emulsion is poured and blends to a thin coating. The zinc, now photosensitized, is placed on another camera. The negatives are arranged in contact with the photosensitive zinc plate and exposed to light. The photographic image has just been printed onto the zinc. Then, the zinc is immersed in photographic fixer. It is now a shallow engraving but it must still be deep etched. It is bathed in a tray of acid called the scummer and gently sponged to remove any residue. At the etcher, the zinc is secured to a rotary disc. It will be whirled within a spray of acid. This deep etches the lines and dots that will appear as type and pictures on the printed newspaper page. The completed engravings are trimmed. We have observed three processes, hot type, cold type, and photo engraving. Now, let's see how these components are assembled. The compositor works from the dummy to make up a page. He inserts type in the designated column. This compositor is about to finish or close a page. The news editor selects alternate items to fill any remaining space. The finished page is locked up, that is, wedged securely within a steel framework. It is transported to the stereotype department. The stereotyper selects a damp matrix or mat which looks like smooth cardboard. The mat is covered with a sheet of nylon and a blanket of cork. Tons of pressure are exerted under the cylinder, impressing the mat into the type. This creates a full-page map duplicate. The map is examined to be sure that a clean, sharp impression has been retained. Then it is placed in a drying roaster. Vacuum in the lid holds the mat in a true radius as it is baked. When the exact moisture content has been removed, it will be trimmed and sent to the foundry. The mat is inserted into the casting box. Molten lead is injected, then is chilled to a solid state. Casting is propelled into the shaver. Cutters and knives trim the plate to precision size.
the stereotype plates emerge into the press room. The presses are a continuous string of units about 30 feet high. There are three working levels. This is the main level with superstructure and catwalks above. The press crew will plate up for the next edition. Each man depresses a safe button on the control stations so that the press cannot be advanced while he is working. Plates from the previous editions are removed. They'll be returned to the stereotype department and remelted. The new plates are locked onto the cylinders. The safe button is released so that the press can be moved. The operator presses the control button and the press gradually accelerates. Webs of newsprint converge at the formers. With each new addition, margins must be realigned, color revised, electric switches regulate the ink supply. Presses continue to roar, cruise speed 60,000 impressions an hour. We descend to the lower level, or real room. Rolls of newsprint unwind to supply press units overhead. Depleted rolls are automatically spliced to new rolls at running speed. These are called flying pasters, a system of electronics compute the paster cycle. The amber light indicates the system is synchronized. Brushes adhere both surfaces and a knife chops the tail. The core is removed. A new roll is installed. A continuous stream of newspapers pour from the folder and travel by conveyor to the mail room. The machine automatically stacks the papers into counted bundles. The bundles are topped and assigned to a delivery route. Automatically compressed and tied. Paper is on its way to the readers. We have learned something of the people and the machines behind the scenes of a modern newspaper. But is there more? We saw nothing of advertising. How are display ads prepared? How many people are involved in classified advertising? What about accounting, bookkeeping? What training is required for data processing? How does one become a computer technician? How does one learn a trade? Any one of the specialized crafts within the printing industry. There is a lot more to newspaper production than the editorial room. Let's talk about it.